Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Mood616 here, and yes, it is time for another Top 10 Tuesday episode, and today's episode is number 25. Yes, and of course we are talking about Stephen King adaptations. Uh, this is going to be Stephen King, my Top 10 personal Stephen King horror film adaptation, so this is just going to be strictly horror films. Uh, we all know that he's done lots of non-horror uh, you know, wrote lots of stories that are non horror that have turned into fantastic films. Um, but yeah, those are not eligible for this list. So, uh, what can I say about Stephen King? He's been always a favorite author of mine. I've read so much of his work, probably 90% of it. Um, I own pretty much everything. Um, I'm a really big fan of his short stories, hence like Night Shift and Skeleton Crew, short story books. These things house so many classic stories that have been uh, adapted into film. So, Stephen King, without further ado, we all know who he is, so let's get into the top 10. Number 10, of course, is the short story is actually from Night Shift here, and that is Children of the Corn. Now, I have a really special bond with this film because I've seen this one way back in the day. Um, I don't know when it was. I was really relatively young when it came out. Uh, this one came out in 84, so I was four. I've seen it when I was about seven or eight years old or something for the first time. And it literally scared the shit out of me. I don't know what it was about this movie, but just the fact of kids, you know, just kind of doing their own thing and there's no adults. It just scared the shit out of me. It terrified me. I was, I'm still to this day, every time I see cornfields, I kind of get a little weary about them. Um, but yeah, Children of the Corn, it, you know, it, it's just a personal favorite of mine. I don't think it's one of the best Stephen King uh, adaptions out there, but it's still really good. I think it's fantastic, but it's just, I love this movie. Number 10. Yeah. All right. Number nine, we've got uh, Graveyard Shift. Uh, Graveyard Shift is actually another short story in uh, in Night Shift, actually. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the one with the good cover at the original cover. This is the re-release, but always love this film. I love the whole idea of, you know, working graveyards because I actually do that myself right now. Um, of course, this one's got rats in it, which I love, and it's just, it's an interesting flick, man, you know, it's just, it, in my opinion, it's one of the more over, maybe kind of overlooked ones, I don't know, but I just have a special place for this one, I've always enjoyed this flick, I think it's fantastic, good stuff, it's got Brad Dorf in it, and it just feels really grungy and gritty, um, I don't know, entertaining flick, Graveyard Shift, at number nine, all right, moving along, number eight is, uh, the TV film Salem's Lot, directed by Toby Hooper. Uh, this one right here, I think, is about 183 minutes long. Yes, but just a fantastic adaptation. Love this vampire story. I mean, you cannot say that he is not creepy as shit. Kind of looks like Nosferatu. Um, yeah, this is fantastic. It's long. I don't watch this one a whole lot because, you know, it being so damn long. You know, it's just over three hours long, so you got to invest a lot of time into it. But this is a fantastic film. Uh, I know it's been re-released without the snapper case, so I don't really care. I'll just keep my snapper case. But yeah, this is a really great one. Really great vampire flick. Salem's Lot, number eight. Number seven is The Mist. And the short story actually comes from Skeleton Crew, actually. It's, I don't know, 60 or 70 pages long or something, rather. Uh, the Mist. What can I say about The Mist? It's a long flick with a fantastic ending. I know a lot of people, you know, tend to disagree on that. They really dislike the ending of this one. Um, but I think it works, and I think that's what makes this film, you know, not just the ending what makes it memorable, but I love this whole idea of being trapped in a grocery store. It kind of turns into contained horror, not knowing what's going on outside with creatures and, you know, just having all these really kind of interesting characters and, you know, their problems come about. I just, I really like the whole structure of The Mist. I think it's fantastic. It's one of my favorite films. Um, this is actually the edition that you can play with the, um, you can play black and white. I do highly recommend that you check it out in black and white because it looks, it, it has, it makes the f film just have a totally different feel to it. Uh, really great stuff. But The Mist, what can I say? Awesome movie. Really awesome. Number seven. Now, number six is, of course, Christine, which I do have the book up there. Um, always love this John Carpenter film. I think he did a great job. Score's fantastic to this one. Uh, it's an awesome read. I love the idea of, you know, just vehicles coming to life and stuff. And, 
you know, hence Trucks, which turned into Maximum Overdrive and even spawned a TV remake. But uh, Stephen King's actually, you know, he's done a lot of stories based on, you know, vehicles and killer vehicles and, and shit like that. So he's kind of got a little bit of an obsession with it. But uh, I love this movie, love the soundtrack. I just, I like the whole idea, I like kind of the, um, you know, the, the sub ideas that are in the film and things that are going on. This is just a really memorable film to me. You know, um, I read the book when I was so young. I actually want to read it again sometime, just to kind of compare the two. But uh, Christine, awesome flick. What can I say? Number six. Number five is one of the most likable werewolf films out there. And that's uh, Stephen King's Silver Bullet. Of course, great cast. You know, you got Gary Busey, Corey Haim. Uh, just a really, really entertaining, likable film. You know, it's got great atmosphere. And it's just... <sighs> It's a film that you just can't hate on. I don't know. This is one of my favorite werewolf films. It's a great adaptation. Um, I believe Circle of the Werewolf is the story by Stephen King, which is, uh, it's not in one, I think it's in different seasons actually, that, or something like that, or I don't know, one of those other short story books, but Silver Bullet, what a great film. Everybody knows about that one. Number five. Number four is Creep Show. Uh, <laughs> what can I say about Creep Show, man? Just fucking awesome, awesome stuff. Um, I mean, look at the collaboration on this, you know, really. Romero, Stephen King. I mean, you can't go wrong with that right there. Everybody knows about this classic anthology film. I really enjoy the second uh, Creep Show also. And of course, The Raft being such a great short, um, which I believe The Raft is in one of these shorts uh, books, actually that story comes from so but yeah the creep show everyone knows about creep show fantastic stuff that was number four number three of course is the legendary pet cemetery uh which is actually the very first stephen king novel i ever read i read it when i was in grade four i was roughly nine or ten years nine years old i don't know um but uh it took me a long time to get through. There's a lot of words I didn't quite understand at the time, but I did. I got through it. it scared the shit out of me. Watched the film after um, and loved it. You know, it's it's got so many memorable characters in it. Of course, a little gauge there. Um, yeah. Just, oh, fuck, man. Everything about this movie is awesome. Mary Lam Lambert did a great job directing this film. It's just, it's so memorable. It's creepy. It's sad at the same time. Um... Yeah, it's got a lot of, uh, it's kind of like a mixed bag of emotions, really, but it's such a great film. Everyone needs to see it if you've never seen it. Pet Cemetery. that's number three. Number two is Carrie. This is a film that's always kind of, always kind of goes up and down on my list, but I've had a, like a newfound kind of appreciation for this one again, just after kind of discussing it with uh, my boy Double Shot J. Um, and uh, actually rewatching it last week. And, you know, this movie's just fantastic great performances great story it's just so powerful in what it does and you know and it's kind of like one of the very first kind of high school type drama horror films out there you know very or for like notable ones anyways can't even really think of too many ones before it but um but yeah carrie just it has so much merit to it you know it's just such a fantastic film of course just recently spawned a remake uh which i have not seen and i probably won't watch to be honest i'm don't really need to um, I probably will watch it one day but Sissy Spacek just fantastic in this one of course John Travolta plays the dick in this but yeah Carrie awesome stuff number two and of course my favorite adaptation is The Shining yes The Shining oh man when I first read the book for The Shining I had to read it again because it was just so fucking weird and awesome I just loved it so much this adaptation is very very different than the book um Stephen King's adaptation TV adaptation that he did for his story is a lot more close to the book but there's something about Stanley Kubrick's uh you know film that just I love so much it's kind of a mix of Stephen King's story and his ideas and Stanley Kubrick's visions and oh it's just amazing of course this one spawned a very controversial um, fucking documentary Room 237 like, a couple years ago which is actually a very very entertaining watch because just some of the ideas and conspiracy theories that go along with that are just outrageous but it's pretty entertaining to watch but yeah this one right here everything about this movie don't really have to say too much about it but it's just it's it's so good from top to bottom it just has so many different elements to it visually it's just stunning um, a great story great ghost story uh, 
paranoia story. It's got all, it's got everything, but yeah. Stephen King's Shining, my favorite adaptation for sure. Recap, number one, Stephen King's The Shining. Carrie, number two, Pet Cemetery, number three, Creep Show, number four, Silver Bullet at number five, Christine, number six, Stephen King's The Mist, number seven, Salem's Lot at number eight, The Underrated Graveyard Shift at number nine, in my opinion, and number 10, Children of the Corn. Of course, I had to leave off so many movies that I love. Like, I love Misery. I love the I love the movie, but I prefer the book to be honest. This book is a lot more violent than the um, than the you know the movie. This is a better. It's just it's it's so it's crazy to read actually. Really really good stuff. Um, Maximum Overdrive, which I love, which is a short story in one of these I think or something like that. The Dead Zone I love. It is another one I love. Firestarter is another one I I really dig. Sometimes I come back. It's fun. There's so many good Stephen King adaptations out there. Um, you know, among things, and he's got so many TV adaptations most recently, Under the Dome, you know, his TV films like The Stand, and so on and so on, and just, they just keep going and going, but, um, can only have 10 in the list, and that's my 10 that, you know, I watch the most, so, anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for the video, I'm just rambling now, and I'll see you guys next week in episode 26, alright, cheers, peace!